The definition of an ACO will vary. Um, for, for the most part, as a provider, we are certainly all accountable for the care we provide. What, what the accountability here is, is the uh, fiscal accountability. Um, what the ACO does is it transfers the economic risk from payer to the provider. Um, in the case of um, the Pioneer ACOs, what, what this is doing is basically taking the um, the risk away from CMS and putting the provider groups on a, a budget and our responsibility as providers is to continue to provide high care focus on preventative care but at the same um, time try to reduce the cost to the best of our ability. Um, what, what is more significant and why you really should be paying attention to this is the number of um, organizations such as MacKyper that are becoming ACOs. As of January 1st, there was approximately 4 million beneficiaries now covered by an ACO as, and uh, I believe that was oh, well over 250 organizations that were also ACOs. This is um, the biggest challenge I think we as an, AC, as an ACO um, face today. Um, we have our own P&T committee and our P&T committee um, is now responsible for basically looking at what value the drugs bring to the table. Um, we are looking for outcome driven data, we are looking for data that would show a reduction of events um, which certainly is intuitive to um, reducing costs. We're also looking for data around uh, the impact of patient hospitalizations, patient um, ED visits, etc. The best um, going forward, what we are going to be looking at is how some of the new products being introduced to the markets compare to the current treatment or the current gold standard. And we're going to be looking at some way of comparing which products are the most, which are the safest, which are the most efficacious. And really, in my opinion, we're probably looking at a model that is similar to um, the UK's National Institute for Healthcare and Excellence model, which is widely used again over, over in the UK, which looks at safety, efficacy, and cost more on a global perspective and provides guidelines on which way to uh, provide efficacious and safe treatment options. In my opinion, what this does is this kind of changes the whole dynamics of a P&T committee. The, I think everybody is, um, will accept the fact that Medicare is broke and that the cost of health care, especially as a percentage of um, gross domestic product, is, is kind of um, too high right at this point in time. We have to do something to control cost. This ultimately is an experimental model of reimbursement. The success will be measured over time, and but success will probably be determined by the ability to control cost. Um, as I stated, that the dynamics of a P&T committee is going to change with this model. Um, most P&T committees will look at safety, efficacy, and cost, the safety and efficacy piece will remain the same, but the cost metrics will differ. The return on investment that a P&T will look at certainly differs right now between, say, a hospital, which probably looks at the length of stay plus maybe um, the 30-day readmission rate, and that's what they're using as their cost metrics to determine whether a product should or should not be on formulary. Likewise, a health plan looks at um, this from the perspective of a return of investment over three to five years, which is um, what the average patient will um, flip in and out of a health plan. 
for an ACO, many of our patients are with our physicians for, for, for decades. So our return on investment, our, our, our metrics, um, financial metrics differ. We, we look at a, a very long length of, of treatment, uh, probably in the five to ten year range. So the, the economics for us um, sitting at the table differ. And ultimately, again, we are going to be looking at comparative effectiveness data and looking for information regarding reduction of outcomes um, and reduction of events.